Thank, thank you, everyone, and thank you, LMC TV, for covering this. This is the League of Women Voters for Larchmont Mamaronex Issues Breakfast. I'm Diane Drew, and welcome all of you here. Also, I welcome you. Um, thank you for your support. If you're League members, please continue and please renew. I would like to tell you about a couple of, before we start, a couple of big announcements that we're having. We have two events uh, which your league membership supports, and uh, one of them is our April 16th book club. It's going to be held at the Larchmont Library at 7 p.m., and we are going to be talking about the uh, preliminary report from the Moreland Commission on public corruption. You can download that report from our site, which is League of Women Voters LM, LWVLM.org, or you can get a uh, a copy of the report from the library. So please join us for the book club discussion at the Larchmont Library Thursday, April 16th. We also have a guest speaker at our annual luncheon, that's April 24th at Orienta Beach Club. We have, we're very excited, Zephyr Teachout, who was the 2014 Democratic primary candidate for governor, and she will be our guest at the annual luncheon. Again, that's April 24th, noon, Orienta Beach Club. We have tickets that you can um, purchase for the luncheon. They're going quickly because Teach Out is a big draw. Please go to our website, lwv.org, L, sorry, lwvlm.org for details, or you can see my board members here. Um, yeah, there's Carolyn Pomerantz, Maggie O'Neill, Judy Silverstein. We'd be happy to take your, um, help you with membership today if you would like to join or renew or, or purchase tickets for the luncheon. Um, our guests today are August ge um, guests. First, before introduction, I want to thank you for your service to our communities. Um, you've had many years of service and um, we can't thank you enough. We have, uh, well, let's, I'm going to start with Nancy, since I'm from Mamaroneck, <laughs> I'm going to start with Mamaroneck first. Nancy Seligson, who is our town supervisor. We have our mayor of, uh, of Mamaroneck, Norm Rosenblum, and uh, Larchmont, uh, uh, represented here by our mayor, Ann McAndrews, the trustee, Lorraine Walsh. So welcome very much, and thank you for coming. Um, and one other announcement, sorry, uh, just to make you aware of. Um, we have been asked to let people be aware of the Fair and Affordable Housing Expo. I have flyers. It's this Sunday at, in um, White Plains at the Westchester County Center. Uh, and that is from 11 to 4 this Sunday. So if you would like to attend or if you would like anyone, I will distribute these. Please let people know about them. Uh, our conversation today is on, you know, we're in the digital age and uh, everyone is inundated and we are talking about emails quite a bit and destroying uh, federal emails, et cetera. But communication um, is uh, uh, intense. But what seems to be lost in the communication, and particularly on the local level, is how you get your issues out and how we can talk to you about our concerns. We have many things, but there seems to be um, many areas where you're broadcasting things, and yet the issues, that we, we, it's an overload. It's sort of a, a digital age fatigue. So how do you communicate what is going on? and? Um, and I'm going to ask Anne, since she has to leave, um, she has a prior commitment and she's been gracious enough to see us first. I'm going to ask Anne to start and talk about um, the challenges and um, the e efficacy of communicating in our um, digital age. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, the interesting reason for me having to run out in about 10 minutes is that I have a meeting with Con Ed. And Con Ed is going to sit down with me and the chiefs of police and fire and DPW and talk about crisis management and how they have developed their program since Sandy. This is, we've had several meetings. Uh, Town Supervisor Nancy Seligson 
voiced our concerns very well when we had meetings with Con Ed that, believe me, after Sandy, they were not kumbaya moments. Uh, she said, Con Ed turned local government into their, government, uh, into their customer service. Consequently, <laughs> not just because of that, but because we were all ganging up on Con Ed, uh, the whole issue of communication became more and more important. This meeting at 9 o'clock that I have is going to be uh, centered on something they now call the dashboard. Uh, that's the new fancy dancy word in uh, commu uh, computer communication, is that we can now go online as can customers, but we have an enhanced program, <laughs> uh, that can tell you where the outages are and whether they have responded to them and in many ways how they are responding to them which during Sandy was the essence of the problem. You know, we have found that people can cope with crisis if they know something. And that gets us down to today's topic, is that how do we then communicate this information, uh, especially when there's no power? During Sandy, we were extraordinarily lucky in that the library across the street from Village Hall, the Larchmont Library, which the town and village share, did not lose power. It was mildly miraculous. <laughs> uh, but I was reduced to going over with one of those big post-it things, you know, that people, that facilitators use during uh, ses sessions, and writing out some things <laughs> and sticking it on the door, because that's where people were going. The old days of the, f of the sirens at 8 o'clock in the morning, at 8 a.m., some of us may, may remember, four short ones meant no school, snow day, you know, those, those days ago, we get calls at 5.45 in the morning now, because 8 o'clock is too late anyway, although I would really like to see the return of the siren. <laughs> so we, uh, we are then faced with uh, c uh, the challenge of communication, especially in, ma in times of crisis, because we are the provider of local services, we are the provider of water, and police and fire, uh, sanitation services, we are the Local government is the channel for that, and now we're faced with the difficulty of communicating with them. How do we do it? The days of the old postcard that you used to put on your bulletin board, postal charges and costs are, are, are beyond belief. And frankly, we don't send out that kind of information anymore. Uh, we have certain services that we use for robocalls and email and text messaging. Uh, that, w that we use, uh, they're expensive services. The Village of Larchmont pays $6,000 a year for the this, this service that it uses uh, called Blackboard Connect. Uh, they collect, with our help, email ad, uh, well mostly, mostly phone numbers, and they do go through the list, they tell me, to drop dead numbers. It's intriguing that what used to be the most public of information, the phone book, <coughs> has become sort of privacy. So we have this dichotomy between getting communication out and people now consider their contact information highly private. <laughs> and, to, and to get people, hey, give me your cell phone number, now seems to be the most intimate of questions. <laughs> and that's because we always, well, each of us, everybody here has the cell phone number a cell phone, some communication in their pocket. So we do have that dichotomy of how do we, uh, how do we get information that we consider essential from, from those who consider it so private. <laughs> um, a, a quick story about uh, Facebook, and that I just want everybody who has made a friend's request to me, I have no friends, okay? <laughs> I have not answered a single friend request a couple of years ago, I made the stupid uh, a request of my sister uh, to please send me pictures from my daughter's wedding. And she said, Ann, Ann, they're already on Facebook. You know, they're dummy. So I got my Facebook account, and I lied about my age. <laughs> and, and I, uh, you know, I hit the button and it said submit. It didn't say, you know, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> and, and now I have, uh, I think my last count was about 78 friends requests. Thank you very much. I'm not dissing anybody. But here we have a communication method that we, uh, we use all the time that's totally new. But 
uh, can, uh, uh, how, what does the village do about things like Facebook and Twitter? I checked Twitter this morning for Lachmont because I find out stuff that's happening that I haven't been informed about through regular channels. My colleague, Lorraine Walsh, who is a really tech, tech savvy, savvy, will tell us a little bit of, uh, more about what the village is doing in communications through what we call social media. Uh, I noticed on a plane trip I took recently that I was the only one in the waiting room reading a newspaper. I was the only one. Mm -hmm. Everyone has it on their tablets. Uh, and a tablet, just by definition, is very confining, very confining. You don't just open it up and say, oh, look at that. Isn't that an interesting article? So we're dealing with a wideness, a broadness of communication, but it gets very, 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 very narrow. Uh, lastly, emails. With all the controversies that are going on now about, about email, I use my email account as my filing cabinet, mm -hmm. uh, which probably isn't the smartest thing in the world. <laughs> But then to find out in today's newspaper that I read this morning that uh, state government is now uh, deleting emails uh, over three months old. Holy moly, yeah. that, would, that, that could be disastrous. So do I now print out all this stuff? It gets me back to the days of how do we, I, I, of, of simple communication. Um, communication all the time creates a jumble and we just have to spend more time filtering out and what is important and what isn't important. So communication between the village and its residents has changed. It has become far more vital than it used to be. Uh, the details I'll leave to Lorraine on what, how we're going, going forward. Uh, but it is absolutely essential that government services constantly keep ahead of the communications curb. But I would really like to see that that siren again. Uh, uh, but a little late. Eight o'clock in the morning is too late on a snow day. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You want to continue? Sure. And then um, I was thinking about today's uh, discussion on communication and how to really approach it. And um, I realize that my areas of expertise are running a municipal government, Long Island Sound, and my son, Benjamin Andrew Green. <laughs> but uh, usually I'm asked to talk about the first two. And um, communication is really a frustrating topic, as I think you just heard a little bit from uh, Mayor Ann McAndrews. It's frustrating for the supervisor of a medium-sized municipality with limited resources trying to reach the public. We know uh, in this small group here that town government, village government is the layer, level of government that affects people's lives the most. Uh, we are the ones who are um, taking care of sanitation, roads, uh, uh, sidewalks, police, fire, ambulance. And we really need to have reliable, consistent ways to communicate. We used to have the Larchmont Gazette which was truly a, a local an information communication source. We used to have a truly local daily paper. We used to have people attend our, attend our town board meetings. Uh, but now we have a website, many online news and blog offerings, emails, robocalls, and a few weekly newspapers. Um, the robocalls we use in the town of Marinek for just emergencies. We know that it's an intrusion to have a phone call come to you, um, and we want to save it for the most important emergency information. So it truly is about uh, changes in, in basic services, sanitation, roads, uh, travel, and of course, during Sandy, we actually had daily robocalls because it w we were in a uh, continual state of emergency for about two weeks. Um, we have email blasts and we have, are able to email you if you have given us your email address. The robocalls actually capture all the phone numbers in the phone book. So those will go out to every number in the phone book. But in an email blast, you have to have given us your email. And 
uh, for the website, which is continually updated and a ongoing communication tool for the communities, for the towns, um, you have to go on and look at it. We can't uh, make you do that. You've got to decide for yourself. I want to know what's going on in the community today. We also have Facebook pages for uh, environment, recreation, and fire departments. But again, you have to go on Facebook to look at those. So the question then uh, devolves into, should we be using Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat? Mm -hmm. And whatever the next iterations of those are. I'm not sure. Um, it is an overload. Uh, we used to have a newsletter. As Ann said, uh, in the village of Larchmont, in the town of Mamaroneck, we don't send out a newsletter anymore because it seems very antiquated to spend $10,000 to send out a piece of paper that the minute you receive it is dated. It, it doesn't have the most up-to-date information. Um, we talk about communication uh, so far today as a transfer of information. So it's always a question. It's always something we're trying to figure out. How can we best communicate with the public, with the residents? I find that I try and do a lot of explaining whenever I have a microphone or where we have a town board meeting. I try and give context to what's going on and what is happening in the town of Mamaroneck. I ask people to sign up for our website. I ask them to sign up for their um, robocalls and give us their cell phone numbers. But there's another part of communication that uh, we haven't talked about today, and that's dialogue. What about dialogue and conversation? Another area in which I've been trained is facilitation. And that means really basically running a good meeting. Allowing people who come together to talk about a particular topic to feel encouraged and supported in having a dialogue about their interests on that subject. What we have with all this overload of communication and, and online offerings of blogs is really positioning and pronouncements and opinions. There's no dialogue. There's no conversation. And that seems to be, in my opinion, a loss in our uh, level of communication. We would love it on a community level, I think all of us would, to have an honest dialogue and, and conversation. Um, we always lament that people don't come to our town board meetings to discuss issues with us. Um, and we don't know how to get them to do it. We have some great exciting initiatives in the town of Mamaroneck on sustainability and resilience and uh, saving energy and saving money. We want to look at ways of changing our, our garbage collection to save money and reduce waste. Um, we have lots of things we'd like to talk about with residents and get their feedback. But it's not an easy, uh, it's not an easy question of how to do it. We don't have an easy answer for that. So we're trying to use all the tools at our disposal for the transfer of information to get information out. I still feel very frustrated by it that we're, we only have a few thousand people in our email blast. There's uh, 11,000 people in the town of unincorporated town of Mamaroneck. Um, so we know we're not reaching a lot of people. And I would love to have a genuine, real dialogue as well and conversation to bring people in on the topics in which they're interested and to hear what they have to say. So it's a really interesting topic for us in today's world. Um, and there's a lot of frustration around it. And I wish I had the answers, but I, I don't. But we're working on it. And this is a good step to be able to talk about it and, and hear what people have to say. Thank you. Hi. Um, uh, before I start talking on the topic today, I just want to remind Larchmont residents that Election Day in the village of Larchmont is this Wednesday, March Ooh, 18th. Thank you. And um, you can vote at the Village Center um, behind the library. Thanks. Um, <coughs> I'm probably going to be repeating a lot of uh, the, the, the general gist of, of what Anne and Nancy have already spoken about. We all face really the same 
the same issues. But today's topic brought to mind, um, to me, the opening passage of one of my favorite novels, and that is, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> um, the best of times is that, you know, there's never been so many ways that people can receive news and, and, and keep up with events in their community. And you would think that, therefore, communication should be easy and everyone should be in the know. Um, it sometimes seems that we're literally, literally drowning in information. But very often, um, we'll find residents will say to us, well, we didn't know. We didn't know what was going on. And so you say, well, <coughs> did you watch the board meeting on LMC TV? Yes. Did, did you come to the board meeting? Did you check the website? Um, did you look at the bulletin board? That's generally not the case, because the basic principle still applies. Not only does information have to be distributed, but it has to be received. Okay? Um, <coughs> we know everyone has their preferred one or two formats for following news or receiving information. And in order for us to have a broad reach, we need to try to distribute our information in as many ways as possible. Um, and, and here, in a sense, we come to sort of the worst of times, is that long gone are the days of the village crier, or as Anne said, the, the horn in the morning. When schools close now, my house phone rings, my cell phone rings, my, you know, my husband's Blackberry starts beeping, and <coughs> we're, we're, we're inundated with that information. And, and for that purpose, it, that's, that's fine. But <coughs> in general, there are so many ways for us to reach out. Um, it really comes around to the fact that there's a lot more work then on our part in order to try to reach each of those mediums and get our information out. And you may well know that Larchmont Village is small, and we have a very lean staff in our, in our uh, village hall office. Um, and to some extent, when we have a message to get out, it can be reused, but it has to always be massaged and reworked for each, to fit each medium as it goes out. We can't just, you know, push a button and have it go everywhere. Currently, though, we have a website where we post news and announcements as well as meeting minutes. Um, we have a village message board at the post office corner uh, for upcoming events and changes to sanitation schedules. Our board meetings are televised on LMC TV, and of course they're open to the public in the courtroom on Monday evenings at Village Hall. <laughs> uh, there is a bulletin board outside Village Hall, and we maintain an email list for news blasts. I will repeat what Nancy has already said. In order to receive those email news blasts, you need to actively go to the Village website, villageoflarchmont.org, and sign up for them. Um, in addition, we also utilize emergency notification roster for, we, for robocalls for urgent news. Very often we reach out to local newspapers and online news sources like The Loop. We put posters in merchants' windows. We have delivered flyers to homes for specific incidents, such as when we had road repaving in a small area of the village and we needed to alert uh, people like myself who live on a dead-end street and would not be able to exit or enter their street during the day. We also hold community meetings, as we are this Monday evening at 7.30 um, on the subject of the streetscape project on Palmer Avenue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this month, we're going to be introducing a village Facebook page. I know we're a little bit behind the times, <laughs> since both the town and the village of Mamaroneck already have Facebook pages. Um, but on that, we're going to repost news and announcements from the village website and also use it for things that don't really suit that f website format, like photos of community events and happenings in the area that might be of interest to our residents. We've also recently reintroduced the village newsletter, Bits and Pieces, <coughs> and we did actually go old school and print out a few copies and put them in the lobby of the village hall, but by and large, it was a, a this is a, the printout version of bits and pieces, um, but by and large, it was distributed in. It went out primarily in digital format, and there again, we have to figure out. Well, how do we get that out? We posted it on our website, but we know not everyone checks our website for news, so we also sent it to a couple of online news sources and uh, a local blog to have it posted there, um, and we also distributed it to several community groups, such as the Chamber of Commerce, the Larchmont Democrats, and the Library so that they could distribute it to their email lists or put a link on their, in their, their newsletter or on their website. Um, we've been toying with the idea of a Twitter account, but um, 
we're going to have to uh, have a lot more thought about how we would manage that, that, that account and how we would distill our news into the format of, <laughs> of Twitter. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, as I said, communication takes, takes a lot of work and it requires a consistency of approach as well. And it really needs to become a habit that we all reach out in as many, you know, pos all the possible ways in a consistent manner. Um, but of course, as I said at the beginning, not only does information have to be distributed, but it has to be received. So, you know, we really have to rely on our residents to, we, we provide it, we're going to provide it in as many formats as we can, but people have to take an active role in seeking out that information and becoming involved and interested in what's happening in their community. Um, you know, Nancy says we'd love to have dialogue, we'd love to have people come to our meetings. Um, the same goes for we would love to have more people come and volunteer on committees where they could help steer um, the village uh, in various ways in terms of our planning, in terms of our environment, in terms of where we put trees, what we do in our parks. So it really is uh, not only a problem of, of you know, um, from our po point of view of maintaining um, all those ways of communicating, but you know, how do we get the other side? <laughs> how do we get, you know, the, the people in the community to, to figure out what's going to be their way of figure finding uh, information from us and becoming more involved in, in being an active seeker of that information? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, first I'll take advantage and hopefully this uh, will be shown on LMC TV before the 22nd and let everyone know that they should be celebrating in our three communities uh, on the 22nd with the bunny hop at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then, of course, uh, at 1.30, come to the friendly village of Maranek, uh when everyone is uh, Irish and wear green and celebrate the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, but I, I find it very interesting, uh, the concept of communication. <coughs> First, uh, as speaking last on this panel, <coughs> excuse me, Reminds me, always try never to speak after George Latimer, because whatever is done, it's already covered, and that seems to be the <laughs> case here. Uh, but in all seriousness, what we're talking about is a tool, um, and, and a tool changes uh, with the time. Uh, it wasn't that long ago when uh, I would take long-distance uh, trips in a car, and uh, you would turn on your CB and say, uh, where's Smokey? Uh, and now what you have is that uh, you turn on your phone, uh, hopefully not while you're driving, it's almost there, and you have ways. Uh, and Waze is uh, terrific. It, it can give you directions uh, verbally. Uh, but with everything else, there's always a flip side to it. Uh, the police throughout the country now are complaining about Waze because Waze also tells you where the police are. It's the same way as it used to be with the CB. So everything isn't always perfect. Um, but uh, I would note that uh, the best thing, I think, with communication uh, is and the different forms that you use uh, can be very effective. Uh, my feeling is it becomes most effective when you get uh, a return. Uh, I, like uh, all the, uh, the town in the village, uh, the Village of Maranek has its own uh, Facebook page. Uh, I have a Facebook page, uh, Village of Maranek Mayor uh, uh, Rosenblum News. Uh, we do email blasts, we do the robocalls and everything else. Uh, what I found most interesting in how it develops, and perhaps it, it can be even uh, worked on and developed more, is the type of communication is you want to get feedback. And I've been lucky enough that I get a tremendous amount of feedback, both positive and negative, but it is feedback, which is just as important. You don't just want to hear good news. You want to hear what people are complaining about, and that's the way you're going to uh, um, be able to attack the problems. Uh, I think we all started pretty much on the, the new uh, levels of communication with Sandy. It seems to be the ongoing theme. Uh, what I did... Uh, in conjunction with what Ann said, because a lot of times you had power out, what were the different forms of communication you could have? Well, what never seems to go out is the telephone. While the telephone service uh, in some of the communities went out, uh, telephone service in general is always there. Uh, we sent out um, robocalls, uh, we did emails, uh, we called up people and sent text messages by phones and they, they were able to do it. But some of the information went out uh, at the time, of course, it's going to change each time as I went around to the different gas stations. If you remember, because the power was out, 
people were panicking and they had no gas. So I was just fortunate enough, we had three or four stations and they would change depending on the delivery. And that was the type of news that we started to send out. And while it may sound a little hokey, that's the very information you want. People are interested in what affects their lives. Uh, it also leads into, there's so many aspects to this uh, constant communication. Uh, I believe that communication starts with the entire community. Uh, whether it be the flooding, where the village of Maranek had uh, police officers who uh, were uh, bilingual uh, driving around Washingtonville uh, and going over their microphone in Spanish telling people uh, what the process is, talked about FEMA, talked about uh, what's available, and uh, also for safety issues, what they should be doing. And hand we also had handouts. Thank you, Keith, very much. Uh, and that's exactly the point I'm talking about. While we're sitting here, we have to remember that, unfortunately, 60% of the people in this country don't vote. And I think it's because they do not relate to government or their uh, elected officials. So communication is a great tool. I think one of the best communications we have to get feedback is the kids. You go to the school for the different programs, and they will ask you any question. They don't care. They, it's very unqualified. And that's the type of feedback you want. And then you go up and... Uh, at any time, you're going to have uh, requests uh, for people to come in. Well, we're going to have this event at the school, or we're going to have this event at one of the service organizations. Uh, very honestly, I, it may be uh, quite controversial, but that's the ones you want to communicate with the community. Uh, one of the latest uh, controversies is the concept of a clinic in the Mamaroneck Avenue School. Uh, now, this is controversial because you have obviously two sides. Uh, but the question is, you don't bury it. You ha if you don't have communication and discussion, uh, you will end up with uh, other problems as vis-a-vis -vis in the Village of Merrick, Hampshire Country Club, Merrick Beach and Yacht Club, uh, even the TOD study, which we're talking about now, which we actually passed. It's because the lack of communication creates misinformation, and that's the danger. Uh, the Village of Merrick, uh, I think, we're blessed in the fact that uh, we have very active uh, board meetings, probably the best uh, reality show in America. Um, but uh, it, it's healthy because what happens is you create this communication. Um, while we're talking about emails and everything else, we just had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with Bob Freeman, who is, I would say, the grandfather of uh, foils in New York State. And anything you do as an elected official is subject to FOIL, which is Freedom of Information Act. So just be careful how you do it. Uh, obviously, it's now coming to the forefront uh, because of uh, Hillary Clinton. Now, good, bad, or indifferent, the, the point is that that is communication in itself. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's talking about emails. I'm very sensitive to emails because being involved as an elected official, you're always named in lawsuits, and you are subject for FOILs, for emails, and even in, uh, in depositions and so on. So I learned very quickly um, you can use your personal computer uh, for emails, but they are subject to FOILs and subpoena. So you learn very quickly, which I do now. I no longer use uh, my email at work or at home. Uh, I only use and go online. You can do it uh, remotely, only the emails through the Village of Mamaroneck. And you don't have to worry about saving them because the Village of Mamaroneck saves them and they're all available. So there are different types of aspects uh, of communication. Um, I think that uh, robocalls are very important. Uh, it, uh, like I said before, there are situations, emergency situations, uh, where uh, power may be out. Uh, the telephone very rarely is not available to people, uh, and you can do that. Uh, and, and I agree wholeheartedly with Nancy is that you want to make sure it's only um, emergencies. As a matter of fact, I think the base of our robocall, aside from our own, is the Westchester Joint Waterworks with their, with their robocall. And it is expensive, but uh, sometimes expensive is cheap. And cheap could be expensive. So what you want to do is make sure people are there. And it really comes down to basically communication. And whatever we do uh, currently and in the future is to get the people to come back to us. I get more information from people that send me emails and telephone calls than any other method. And uh, what I describe to them, and it's becoming, uh, they know my MO, method of operation. People call me up. Uh, I get the information and their name is not forwarded. 
The important part is to get the information back. And then as the chief elected official, I call up Rich Schillingland, the head administrator, and they go to the different departments. Uh, most uh, recently, an example is with the weather, which we're going to continue to have, are the potholes. Potholes are very dangerous. Uh, you don't think about it until it happens, the same as the email question. But it has a direct effect on people. Uh, there are people like the cars are destroyed or, or the uh, uh, their tires are blown and stuff like that. Uh, it may seem very simple, but it has to do with the quality of life. And again, it's a, it's a tool, and it goes back to what I'll just use that term. It's the quality of life that we live in in the, the two villages in the town of Mamaroneck. So uh, without repeating everything that's done before, I just say those that are watching on LMC TV, uh, feel free to call uh, any of your elected officials. Uh, we, you do not be threatened. Do not be intimidated. We are your servants. You are not ours. Uh, and I would just say uh, thank you very much. So to open the dialogue, I want to see your reactions of what you think of how you can best communicate to your elected officials. Does anyone have any comments or? Good morning. Thank you for the excellent presentation from our elected officials. It's not uh, really a question. It's just more of a, of a comment. I guess it can be a question. When you do receive the what you consider lack of communication when somebody said I didn't receive this I didn't receive that is it more of a I or is it more of a we as a community because there are a lot of people who will disregard now mayor um, Norm and well we're on a personal relationship only based upon the fact that the river rises quite quite frequently and you quite frequently visit our our neighborhood just to make sure everything is right and then when you were mentioning that I remember the personal handouts as, re as, as well as the, the uniformed policemen coming around knocking on doors. And then we do have a town crier because at 3 o'clock in the morning the river crested. And as a result they were knocking on doors telling us that, listen, there might be a chance of evacuation. But we do have that line of communication. But my question is, sometimes when people say I didn't receive it, is it, is it, is it, a, is it a result of I or is it a result of we as a community? I think it's a combination, Keith, and you're 100% right. Uh, you can't, as was noted before, you can't make people call you up and ask. Uh, but I can guarantee one thing, when they are affected, they will be calling you up. So the point uh, the matter is, uh, walk around. Uh, I'll get communications walking up and down Mamaroneck Avenue almost every weekend if I'm in this area. Uh, I will be walking in Mamaroneck Avenue or I will uh, react to communications and walk in, the, and walk in that area. Uh, also when you're talking about such things as transit-oriented development, uh, it's all interconnected. When you're talking about uh, a clinic in Mamaroneck Avenue School, you're also talking about the effect of uh, the future development, which the village of Mamaroneck just passed. Uh, so whether it's I or we, it's a matter of uh, just contact. And again, it's a communication tool. I have a card all the time. Here's my card. Here's my email. Do me a favor. Put, uh, send me your email, and I will put it on my email list. I, s I have an email list of several thousand people. Uh, I have a Facebook page of uh, over 2,300 people. Uh, it's very easy. You just push a button, and you can send it out. And the great thing about those communications are, if they don't like it, delete, delete, delete. So it's a combination. And it's, so it goes both ways. It's, it's working uh, in conjunction with get the people involved, and hopefully to the point where they are interested in their government, and they realize they can have an impact on it. They can. Um, as a constituent in the village of Mameranek, I would like to thank Mayor Norman um, Rosenblum. I've got to say, the email blasts that you send out are very informative. I know every morning if a torrential rainstorm is coming in, I really appreciate that. Do you think that moving forward in um, all three municipalities, that it might be wise to create a new position um, in terms of employment, a new job? Um, to have a liaison for communications to alleviate some of the stress for you guys and also to take care of like the legal issues to make sure that whatever messages are going out are nonpartisan and they're received by the entire community in the most effective way. Yes. Maggie, we would love that. Um, in fact, it is something that we talk about often in having a communications person on staff. Unfortunately, we have very limited resources, and we're living under a state-imposed tax levy cap, 
uh, that doesn't allow us in a lot of ways to grow with how the world is evolving, developing, and changing. So we're always trying to limit our expenses and frankly, our biggest expense is staff and employees. So bringing on someone uh, to do that would is almost like a dream for all of us, I think, um, because it would be so helpful in terms of efficiency and um, consistency and reliability. But it is a really heavy lift when it comes to the economic burden of it. So hopefully, or maybe sometime, we would be able to, as maybe even a three uh, three of us working together, having a shared communications <laughs> person who could, you know, truly help all of us get the, the information out. They would have to be a genius, though. Yeah, <laughs> and very patient. <coughs> well, what do you find that's working? I mean, you had talked about, I mean, it, all various communications, but is there something that you can measure that you know is ex successful that you... That, um, I mean, you, Nancy, you mentioned it's hard. You have a thousand. We have two thousand um, email addresses. So uh, we see that, believe it or not, as successful because before s the superstorm Sandy, we probably had twenty. <laughs> um, we had very few. So um, you know that kind of crisis actually was uh, had a positive result in that people went to the. Uh, website signed up for the emails and uh, robocalls. So that is one measure of success for us. But as I said, there are 11,000 people in the unincorporated town. I mean, clearly households are not just one person, so presumably if a household is getting that call, uh, everyone's learning about it. But we'd like to have a much larger number there. <coughs> we do have a way um, for some of our methods of measuring feedback, as as Norm said. You know, you do get the phone calls, you get comments on your face. I assume you get comments on your <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> um, for uh, for emails, we uh, we we use a service to send those out, and we get feedback from them in terms of how many were received, numbers, how many were rec were received, how many were opened. So we get a sense of, you know, is this really uh, a, an effective communication form? Um, and the same goes for the robocalls. You know, we get back information about whether we're they were dead numbers and, you know, it, how, how many times they rolled over, et cetera. So we can assess, you know, how things are going. You know, very often, um, you know, people might sign up for the email blasts in times of crisis like after Sandy and then when you know, an email comes, they're just not in the mood and they <laughs> just want to hit that button, that, you know, that's their choice that time, but at least it's, we know it's still going there. Um, and robocalls, we do have a, an issue uh, of late with some, uh, some dead numbers. Some people aren't using landlines anymore at all, and in that case, um, you know, we need to get their cell phone number, and that for that they have, to, they have to give it to us. They have to either contact the police or they have to go on the website and sign up for the emergency emergency notification and give us their cell phone number. So those are some of the ways we get we get feedback to see what's working. Yeah, and I, I'd also emphasize that uh, while we're looking to contact as many people as possible, it's just as important to remember uh, one benefit at a time uh, is a good basis. I'll give a prime example. Very le recently, when the taxes were due in the village of Mamaroneck, a few people missed and they didn't realize, and they say. Uh, excuse me, why I had to pay 10% extra, you know, the 300, 400, 500 thousand uh, dollars. Unfortunately, under New York State law, there is no exemption whatsoever. If you do not pay uh, by a date certain, uh, you are subject to penalties. Unless uh, what it is, if it comes in late, but it's uh, stamped by the post office, then uh, you won't do. But what we've done because of this several times, uh, we now have available a reminder that we will do that you don't have to remember. The village will send out a notice to you reminding, listen, your taxes are coming up. Don't forget. And if you are late, unfortunately, we can't do anything about it. That's just a prime example. But again, talking back to uh, from the CB now, was that this week Apple just came out with uh, a watch that does everything for you. I mean, I'm surprised it doesn't cook. But uh, it, it's another example of uh, how you can have communication. So we do have to... Uh, uh, look continuously, and I agree 100% uh, with Nancy uh, and Maggie. It would be great to be able to have uh, someone to do it. Unfortunately, the funds aren't there. Uh, 
there's always the uh, term consolidation, I and mean, we can certainly look at that. But even then, it sounds great, but uh, who's going to do it? Uh, why did you put the village in, not the town? Why did the village of Larchmont, not the village of Maranek, and so on? You know, it's a pragmatic uh, approach to that. Um, if we ever had funds and it was terrific, it would be great to do, like everything else. So that's basically it. Having lived with uh, communication issues for many years, I remember a slogan, I think it was IBM promulgated it, uh, it was KISS, K-I-S-S, and I think it stood for Keep It Simple Stupid. Yes. Right? Is that what it was? Yes. Right. And, and, and it was probably good advice then and it's good advice now. Think back on what you read and, and what you don't read in the way of emails or electronic communication. You can't go through page and page and page. Perfect example, we, got, we, we want to save paper, so we do a lot of stuff electronically. Sometimes it's practical, sometimes it isn't. Many of us live on our cell phones rather than our computers. Uh, we got recently a 111-page document via email. Now, that's impossible to read on a, on, a, on a cell phone. You just don't have the time or the eye power to do it. Uh, what I've been trying to do, and I'm the, I'm the deputy supervisor, by the way, in, in the town of Amaranek, um, and a councilman, when I send an email message, I try to put the key information in the header, in the subject. Uh, LWV reminder Friday morning. And that's maybe whatever else I say, if they don't read it, they got the message and they saw what they needed to see. So again, keep it simple and maybe we'll have more effective communication. We don't need pages and pages. I recall recently two granddaughters who slept over. It was about 1130 and they were in bed sharing a, a large bed. And they, have, they were back to back and they were both on their cell phones. And I said, who the heck could you girls be possibly talking to at 11.30 at night? And it was each other. <laughs> <laughs> and so the world of communication has changed. Uh, people tw text or whatever the heck they do, and it's one sentence shots, 26 characters or whatever, and that's how they communicated. So if we want to be effective communicators, that's what kind of we have to change how we think things. And uh, I, I remember Ann saying um, she was reading a newspaper. Well, how many times have we gone to a restaurant where as soon as people sit down, they're, they're on their cell phones? I mean, you're there to have a, fam a family get-together or a conversation and put the little buggers down and, uh, and, uh, and talk to each other. Verbal communication is getting to be a lost art. Oh, Grandpa, you're so old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're going to get, and that's what I get, too. Uh, but believe it or not, uh, don't look at it from just our viewpoint. Of course, we're so involved, and you're talking to the chorus. Uh, I'll give an example that everyone here uh, is very familiar with, geese. I can tell you when it was brought up, uh, we got emails that actually shut down the village uh, email site because we were getting it from the entire world. None from the village of Maranek, by the way, but mostly from the entire world. So it depends on the subject. And ironically, we just had a deer forum because this is another subject that people are, are uh, concerned about. And this is the perfect example. This deer subject came up when I uh, ended up talking. I went to the county and I ended up talking with uh, Joe Sack, mayor of the city of Rye. And this came up because of communications we got from the people in the local community. And that's how most of these things come about. So again, uh, and that was well publicized. Uh, some people knew about it. it will always be a situation where someone's going to say, I didn't hear about it, why well, I didn't hear about it. But the majority of people will hear about it. It will be word of mouth. And I can tell you that uh, while I, perhaps I was expecting the same reaction as when we brought up the problem with geese, it was just the total opposite. I'd say 99% are in favor of it. So you just never know. Don't be afraid to open your mouth and put some information out. Um. I want to make a couple of comments, first of all, about the telephone being the most reliable, and I'm sorry Anne had to go off to her Con Ed meeting because I think the more um, Verizon and the other telecoms go away from copper wires, the le less reliable our landlines are going to be anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have the number, but in a, an emergency, the line goes out, um, and I think that's very dangerous. And I'm so, I am so sorry I had to give up my copper line. I didn't realize when I signed up for um, the service that they weren't even going to ask. They were just going to rip out our copper lines and there's no way to get them back. Um, the other thing is going back to the, to the 
dawn of the tele, you know, the, the internet age, in the village of Larchmont, we had a technology committee whose first name was communications. It wasn't just the technology committee, it was the te technology and communications committee. And as volunteers, the volunteers put out a newsletter for the village. Now we got into some trouble because there wasn't enough supervision and it wasn't done in an official way. Um, but I know um, Joe Carvin has a volunteer who puts out a communication for him. And I, I don't think you should overlook the power of having volunteers help you with that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an official function, but if there's the proper liaison and supervision, um, the other thing is in the past, the supervisors and mayors have taken advantage of um, the local newspapers and had a column uh, because the the newspapers are always looking for content that's free and would probably give you a column and you could use that because people do still read or at least open the physical newspapers. Um, the other thing is I think one thing we haven't mentioned, Lorraine is running for re-election. She's running unopposed. In the town of Mamaroneck and in the village of Larchmont, we have not had a contested election in a tremendous amount of time. And because of that, you look at the difference in the village of Mamaroneck, where there's a lot of controversy every two years, there's a lot of communication going on around the election. And because we've had such a um, lack of election time communication, I think everybody in the, in the town and the village of Larchmont has gone to sleep. If you ask them who their elected officials are, they probably don't even know. They don't know what goes on. They no longer get people knocking at the door. They no longer get even that little mailer. And I think, um, I think we have to figure out how to use election time to communicate more efficiently, even when it's uh, non-opposed. Because I think what the, the logical thing is for the parties and the candidates to say, I don't need to do all that electioneering. And as a result, they're also not doing all of that communication, which is a big imposition on a candidate, I understand. But um, it, it's an imposition, but it's also an opportunity. And, and that opportunity has been lost for I don't know how long now. It's been a decade. Um, <coughs> Yeah, but, very, but very modestly contested elections, and uh, so those are so use your volunteers or think about how to use your volunteers more. Um, not you're you're you you're stretching yourselves very thin, so don't use you don't rely on just yourselves. Use your volunteers, and um, talk to Con Ed about better ways of uh, preserving our landlines. Thank you, Judy. That, that was exactly what I was going to talk about. Historically, in terms of the three municipalities, there has been some degree of consolidation and communication. And it just seems like when we can come together through a disaster, th that should be the most. And that was my initial question in regarding, is it a I question or is it a we question in generically throughout our three communities? Um, I agree with the fact that a lot of these things are not really that much cost effective if we do have a degree. I remember I grew up in the, the, uh, the time of civil defense. So civil defense, I don't think there was anybody really paid because people would put on their helmets, their arm, bads, uh, arm bad badges, and then there was a the guidance of our community. Uh, what we had to do, we walked in uniform to say, because of this nuclear bomb that was going to hit us now take cover. So where has that gone in terms of our community? And that should be the pride of our three communities because we're still most unique communities in, in Westchester County in New York State when it comes down to, I guess, cooperativeness, recreation, anything. So I agree with you, Judy, there should be some degree of volunteerism. So it doesn't have to be really that cost effective, Nancy. Just an idea, maybe um, for the next census, there should be a request that um, cell phone numbers and email address are included. So as elected officials, that information is given to you guys officially. Um, I know that when we make campaign calls and we get the list of the county, one of the worst things is to call somebody and have them say, oh, well, is so-and-so here and they've been dead for 15 years. You know, that's, that's terrible and you hate to have to make those phone calls. So maybe the responsibility should fall on the larger municipalities of Westchester County or New York State to help provide you guys with those informations. How else are you going to get it? I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the robocalls. If you recall around election time, they got to be terrible. 
the politicians or the, the campaign committees were sending out mailings, they were sending out uh, robocalls constantly. You, we virtually gave up the telephone. We did not answer the phone after a while because it was just going to be another so-and-so uh, call. So you you got to uh, figure out what's the right combination of, uh, of, of, of hitting people. You need to repeat your message, no question. One message, uh, you know, I, I went to a few seminars on, uh, on marketing via email and uh, forget about one-shot emails, forget about two, three. You might have to go to six or seven uh, repetitions before somebody took action on your, uh, your suggestion. So it, there's a delicate balance. I'm, I'm not sure that the volunteer uh, route will really work. A lot of our communication is emergency related. And if you've got a problem in the middle of the night or you don't have a volunteer sitting around to do it, you need someone who's a, a staff person who you can say, hey, we've got to do this. It's got to be done now. Uh, it, it's not something maybe we can get together three days from now and do. So you have to figure out, it's great to use volunteer help and uh, we no longer print the newsletter. It used to get mailed out to everybody. It would take a couple of weeks to put together. Now things move so quickly, you've got to get it up uh, on the website. When we have a, a discussion at a town board meeting, I'm always suggesting, well, let's make sure it's on the website so tomorrow people can digest it and look at it. If you want to read details about it, it's there. But if you don't, if you just want to know what's happening when, uh, okay. We get so inundated with information that it's very difficult to sort it all out. I mean, I don't work anymore, work, work, um, and, and I find it difficult to find the time to, uh, to do all the things that come to me as there's a, there's a meeting tomorrow, there's something Saturday, Sunday. Um, how do you sort it out? It used to be that the weekends were free. I could worry about getting my boat ready for the summer activities, but no more because now people have worked into Saturday and Sunday uh, stuff that happens. I just wondered if you'd uh, comment on the changing face of local media coverage and how, um, how you get your messages out and what vehicles you think have been effective and not effective in, um, in accessing you know, the, the voice of the media in terms of uh, the different types of uh, activities and ways that you can communicate. And don't forget to mention Local Live. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Actually, it's a perfect segue we wanted to say before uh, for what Ernie was saying also, uh, and Keith. Uh, there are other methods. Uh, I think every Tuesday morning I could tell you I uh, unfortunately follow, instead of going in front of him, uh, George on WVOX. Uh, if you listen to George, you will know what's going on in the entire Westchester County, not just the villages of Mamaroneck, Larchmont, and the town. Um, uh, while a little facetious, it's a very important tool. That's one example of another tool and I'll emphasize the word tool all the time to inform the people. Uh, one of the key things we have, because uh, while you had the Larchmont Gazette, you had the Daily Times, uh, all were bought up by the Journal News, and you might as well forget newspapers in this area. Uh, nothing is covered. LMC TV is probably one of the most effective tools that we have. This leads to a discussion that uh, while uh, there is some agreement, uh, things have to be worked out, but I firmly believe and, and strongly support uh, the consolidation of LMC TV. Uh, hopefully it will be uh, in the firehouse that's been discussed. Uh, wherever it be ends up remains to be seen. But the key is we have unknown factors in the future. Uh, what is the viability of uh, the cable industry as far as uh, a Verizon uh, or UA cable and what kind of funds are the local municipalities going to get? So while we have the money, uh, to invest, we have to ensure that uh, while we have no control over the newspapers, we do have control over local media. Our prime source is going to be LMC TV for the three communities. Hopefully, uh, WVOX and other areas will be around, as is even CBS Radio. When Sean Adams, who is a, a local reporter, uh, covers uh, something, uh, we get uh, coverage in the entire New York metropolitan area. So people do listen to that, and, and I get feedback. And again, what do you do with the feedback? Contact the people if they uh, give information in their names. And it's just a matter of building it up. And it's going to change continuously. And I can guarantee, no matter what we do, and what event it is, why didn't you tell me? I didn't hear about it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I can say that LMC TV is definitely, um, you know, one of the best ways to, to reach out and to the local media, use local media rather, to reach out to the residents. When the village was um, discussing having a local law to create an administrator position, as we are the last municipality in the, the county of Westchester to um, have professional leadership, um, we decided to go on the local live. A I went with Mayor McAndrews and um, and spoke about the need for it, you know, what we're currently doing, introduced the local law, and also announced that we were having public hearings where people could come and, and voice um, support, opposition, or just discuss the issue in general. Um, and that, that's a great that's a great opportunity for us to be able to use that 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 resource. Um, in addition, I've I have sent information and I s did send my my newsletter to uh, Linda Larch, the uh, blog. Wh why? Because if I sent it to um, the Mamaroneck Review, it would come out days and days and days later, uh, and they wouldn't print it obviously in the newspaper, but they might link to it on their on their. So there, there are sometimes there's there's a need to to use a, s a resource that is going to get the information out in a very timely manner. Um, if it's something that's a bigger issue, like the administrative position or like the election, then then we will reach out to the Mamaroneck Review or local newspaper, and um, you know give an interview or give them some information or ask them to come in and and, and speak with us about that. We have an extensive. Um, press list in the town of Mamaroneck. Uh, I have sent out many press releases. I don't think any have been picked up. <laughs> um, they are sometimes in the uh, um, Mamaroneck Review. Sometimes they'll pick them up and sometimes some of the online news offerings will pick them up. But a more, uh, uh, an outlet that reaches a larger group uh, rarely does and we're always surprised that even big decisions uh, budget discussions and and um, changes in programs and projects and uh, don't get covered you know it's it's very surprising to us we often think that um, they will and they they just don't so we do continually feed the news list with information but it doesn't get picked up very often it's always difficult when you're talking into a television camera microphone, you project for what the television is going to hear. If you want to project for the room, you talk like this so everybody can hear you. <laughs> this is how Howard Dean lost his presidential <laughs> bid by screaming into a TV microphone. So first I'd rather talk to the room and then I'll come back on the microphone. The, I, I've been doing this for what I do for a long time, over 25 years now since I first ran in this area. Things have changed dramatically. And the communication that I may have as an individual elected legislator is not as important as the information that, that a government is, is, de is delivering, which is oftentimes essential information. But the fundamental problem is we are a suburban bedroom community, and there's a significant percentage of our residents who don't see themselves as living in, an, uh, in the community all the time. This is a place where they have their residency, their, their business takes them internationally and nationally, and they don't necessarily focus on what's happening in their hometown. And because of that, they, you get the factor of, I never heard of that unless it's right in their backyard. The modern technology now that, that's happened, I think, is as much of a sea change to these communities as what the automobile was after World War II. Because you used to work, live, to the greater extent, in your hometown, and you couldn't get around because not everybody had a car. Once everybody had a car, you go here, there to shop, here, there to work, and it changed the complete nature of these communities. And now technology is doing the same thing. When I can get information from my phone, I can be selective about what I want to see and what I don't want to see. The unfortunate reality is, and this is only why you get pounded by so many messages, as do we all, and I generate some of them, as do you, because no one conduit gets the job done. You need every one of these pieces together. The frustration that Nancy just shared about putting out a press release is that the print media that exists has to be worked. They have to be called after the release has arrived, and you have to talk to whoever's covering that, the neighborhood, John Bandy or uh, Ali, uh, Alina or somebody, just work why the story is important. And by the way, when you are not being paid at all, when you're being paid very limited money to be a village mayor, a town supervisor, a village mayor, it, it, that's not your job. And you don't have anybody on staff to do that as a regular basis. 
So all of this frustration, I think, goes to the other thing, which is what I want to say in here. I think part of it is the changing way that all of us outreach, but part of it are the people. The people have to care enough to follow these various local media outlets. They've got to turn on LMC TV. I understand there's a ball game on. I understand there's a, a movie on. I understand it's more interesting to see a reality show with three 20-year-old people in a, in a house with three other 20-year-old people like you don't know what's already going to happen. But, but these things matter. And when you don't read the local paper, when you don't turn on LMC TV, when every phone call to you is an irritation, unless it's from somebody you already know, then you're going to miss important information. So our, part of it is, is there our responsibility. Part of it is the people who are watching. You've got to care enough about your community to tune into your community. Thank you. Thank you. I think Thank you. I, I, I guess what I'm hearing uh, from all of us is that we wish that there was one source that we could go to. And I'm not sure what the hook is with these communities, whether we have a one source and the hook is connected with the schools, because everyone is here for schools and the quality of life, and that links you to your sites. But uh, the fact that we're having the dialogue and we're trying to find solutions to this so that we know and we can be participate more because people become uh, fatigued with the overload of communications and then they don't get involved and we want people involved. So I thank you very much. I thank you for your service. Thank you for the breakfast mm -hmm. and everyone who's participating and LMC TV for covering this. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.